What's going on? This is Cody broadcasting from the Seacrest Studios here on B-Boy 45. And uh, we have quite the treat for you today. It is another special edition of Maya's latest news to keep you in the groove. Maya, who's on the line with us today? David Ramsey. David Ramsey! Woo! Wait, let's see if I have my buttons right. Look at that! The crowd is going wild! Oh my gosh, David Ramsey, we're so excited to have you. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. Thank you. It's, it's such a, a pleasure to be here. So, so thank you for having me. Well, Maya, take it away, girl. Okay. Um, so, Maya! <laughs> um, <laughs> well, thank you so much for calling in. I'm so excited to be talking to you right now. Um, I, I'm excited as well. So my first question for you is who or what inspired you to start acting? Great question. Loaded question. Very good <laughs> question. Um, for, for children to have people in their lives that encourage them to be the best version of themselves and to follow their dreams is I, is immeasurable. Uh, whether that person is a uh, parent or a guardian or a grandparent or a counselor or a friend, a professional of some sort, to have that input, okay, is very important. I just want to kind of preface what I'm about to say with that because um, I grew up in Detroit, and at the time when I grew up, uh, it just wasn't a big infrastructure for uh, guys wanting to be an actor necessarily, right? I mean, you could find it. You could find work there within the local theater department, um, but um, there just wasn't a lot of, and there was some things going on, but not a whole lot. My mother and my father and my grandmother and my brothers and my sisters encouraged me to follow my dreams of being an actor. The, way, the reason why I wanted to be an actor, oddly enough, was my father was a layman minister. And at church, I saw my brother in a play, my older brother. I admire my brother a lot, and I wanted to be just like him. So I looked at him, and I saw what he did in the play, and I thought, I could do that. So I began to just investigate acting and writing and debate and speech and anything else I could get my hands on at school. And as I really studied theater, I, I fell in love with it, fell in love with the art form of acting. And my parents... And my grandparents and my sisters and brothers were so encouraging. And in a, in a place like Detroit during the 80s when I grew up there, um, it just what, wasn't what people were doing, right? So to have parents and a family that was encouraging, hey, do this play downtown in the city of Detroit, you know, at 12 o'clock midnight when you have rehearsal, you know, and, you know, getting on a bus and, you know, it was a dangerous town. And, it, you know, just having that encouragement um, just went a long way to thinking, hey, I can do this because I have people who love me that are encouraging me to, to continue. So it's a long-winded answer. But um, it was really initially because I wanted to impress my brother. And uh, I continued in the art form because of the encouragement of the people around me. Oh, cool. Um, so you played John Diggle on the CW show Arrow, which I'm obsessed with. Wow. Um, uh, Thank you. Yeah. Um, so what's your favorite part about being on a superhero show? Well, I was very fortunate. Uh, so was everyone involved in Arrow. Uh, Arrow, as you know, Maya, started off this great big Arrowverse universe, right? With all these other DC uh, shows and even, even shows that weren't necessarily DC shows all kind of came after Arrow. So I was, I was lucky and fortunate enough to be part of that uh universe what i liked most about it was going to work every day with Stephen amell and emily bett ricards and um echo kellum and all the other actors on the show katie cassidy and rick gonzalez just it, it was such a great show um uh, of people and their chemistry, right? We all just got along and we all just worked really well together. And um, so that was really you know, the best part. We had a lot of fun on set. Just every day was a fun day going to work. 
Oh, cool. Um, so do you have a favorite episode of Arrow? <sighs> well, a favorite episode, yes. But every day, just a, a favorite day on set would have just been an every day, right? Because, I mean, we would, we would just do crazy stuff. Like, we would just we would do fart jokes or whatever. But we would just do crazy things on the set because it was just fun. Fun, fun, fun. Um, but probably my favorite episode was an episode in season six when um, Diggle and um, Oliver had a fight. And it was, it was, a, it was a great episode because it was, they're two brothers, really. They're brothers. And I have brothers. And I remember in that, in that show, they wanted this big choreographed, you know, martial art fight. And me and Steven said, no, these guys are brothers. They're just going to try to put each other in headlocks and, <laughs> and roll around on the ground like two brothers. So we did. And it was a lot of fun. Oh, cool. Um, so uh, you also directed two episodes of the show. Uh, yeah. What was the most challenging part of acting and also directing? Wow, these are good questions. Um, <laughs> the most challenging part of acting and directing is probably just that, right? Putting on the putting on the directing hat and taking off the acting hat and vice versa. So it's probably the most challenging thing. But um, in, in acting or in directing, there's three portions, right? There's the preparation for the show your episode you're going to direct and then there's the actual production or the days that you're doing the directing and then post-production so the editing so as a lot of people listening know this and um so most of the work oddly enough at least for me was done in in the prep so by the time it got to the day of actual shooting i could rely rely a lot on my first my my first assistant director or my director of photography to kind of help when I had to get in front of the camera because they were so aware of what I wanted to do as a director. So um, it wasn't as difficult as you might've thought. Cool. Um, so what is it like to cross over into the other um, CW superhero shows like The Flash? Flash, good example. So I'm looking at my, I'm looking at your place here on Zoom, and there's a wall right behind you. Yeah. Okay, right. Imagine, and it was literally this was li the truth of our sets. Um, on the other side of that wall is Grant Gustin and the cast of Flash doing their show, and where you are is where we're shooting Arrow. It was literally that close, right? A wall separated us particularly from the flash set. Um, but we never saw them because we would be working so much and they would be working so much and so hard that when you had any downtime, you just wanted to go to your trailer and rest or do something else or be with your family. You just didn't have time to go through that door behind you and say, hi, everybody. So <laughs> we didn't see, we didn't see each other, honestly, until crossovers and crossovers were great because you know not only did we get to see the the great cast of flash where we got to see um melissa and the cast of supergirl and katie and the cast of legends of tomorrow and whoever else was in town at the time and it was always a great time with the crossovers oh cool yeah um so you've been in so many cool things. Um, have you had a favorite project or character you've played? Well, I, w I would say that, um, well, Errol, Errol was probably one of my favorite. Uh, many, many years ago, even before you were born, probably. My, I, I played Muhammad Ali back in 2000 for a very small movie of the of the week little tv movie that was great fun uh dexter was great fun but probably it was somewhere between the show a show called blue bloods um which is with tom Selleck and donnie Wahlberg, and i got to play the mayor of new york on that show and and i was in a wheelchair it was it was it was great kind of playing opposite um tom Selleck in that show but I, I probably have to say, even though that was a great character and Dexter was a great character, it was, it was probably Errol. 
era was just great. And it was also the, you know, the better part of a decade. I got eight years with this character and, you know, you don't get to do eight years on most shows. So, um, we, we, I, I got to really sink my teeth in who John Diggle was on Arrow. So, um, and, be, and because of that, we made this extended life and this story about his father and his wife and his children. And there's, there's a lot of things we talked about with this character. So even though the other characters were fantastic, I, I got to say my, my favorite was probably John Diggle. Oh, cool. Um, so you were in the movie Accidental Love with James Mar- Marsden and Bill Hader. Um, yep. How did that opportunity come about? You know, that was, um, you, you know, you, you get to a place, hopefully, uh, everyone aspires to be at that place in, in their acting career where you're not auditioning for jobs and jobs are kind of being offered to you, right? And you get a call from a producer and they say, hey, we have this great job. We want you to read the script, see what you think about it. It's yours if you want. And I haven't quite reached that point yet, <laughs> but uh, I'm usually auditioning. And um, that was Accidental Tourist, um, which uh, had another name at the time, um, I auditioned for. So I met the, the director of the show and um, we auditioned. I auditioned and then I went again and met him again. Or actually, I didn't meet him the first time. I met him the second time and uh, I got the part. And we went down to South Carolina and we shot it for about a month. And it was, it was great. It was fantastic. And I had never been to South Carolina. So the great thing about this job sometimes is you get to kind of travel to go to these places that you, you may, you may or may not have normally gone to. And um, during your downtime, you get to kind of explore the city and find out what, what it was all about. So we, I went to, we shot it in Columbia, South Carolina. Um, and it was, it was a great city, great, great town. And uh, it was a great time down there. I had a lot of fun on that show. Oh, cool. Um, So have you discovered any new hobbies or talents during quarantine? These are all great questions. And the answer is yes and no. The answer is yes and no, Maya. I'll tell you (laughs) why. Okay. Back during... Back in high school, I took four years of Espanol, of Spanish. And, and to all, all the kids or anyone who's listening to me, even the adults, pay attention in school. <laughs> you know, I, I remember being told, you know, just th- the same thing when I was back in high school. And it, was, it, it was all about some things I retained, but like most kids in high school, you just kind of you're taking things to pass the test, but you're not necessarily retaining it, right? Yeah. So um, I got to say, that was my case for nearly four years of Spanish. I was taking, I was taking Spanish to just kind of fulfill the elective or the, the requirements for, you know, to graduate. Um, but I didn't really retain a lot. So I picked up Spanish again during quarantine. And I realized that my habit of not paying attention was not exclusive to just high school. <laughs> because it's, uh, it's been a challenge just kind of, you know, getting my attention on Spanish. But I got to tell you, I'm, I'm, I'm retaining a lot more than I did, oddly enough, when I was 15, 16, and 17, taking the classes then and just trying to pass the exam. So I'm, I'm back in Spanish. <laughs> and and picking up a little bit, and I picked up the guitar again. Going back to what you're asking about in terms of uh, favorite uh, favorite shows, Dexter was one of them. And in and in the show Dexter, I I played guitar, and uh, I learned a little bit uh, for that role. I didn't play before that, but since then I hadn't picked up the guitar. So during quarantine, I was like, let me pick up the guitar again. So I did that. So cool. guitar and Spanish, those are kind of my two. <laughs> the two things I've tackled during quarantine. Oh, cool. Yeah, um, I've been binge watching a lot of shows during quarantine. So <laughs> I haven't done yeah. anything like nearly that uh, as productive as you, but yeah. <laughs> well, I don't, that's the thing, Maya, because I don't know how productive it is, right? Because I just haven't, like, the thing is you, you got you to gotta do this stuff every day, right? You got you got if you're going to learn Spanish or a new language, you have to do it every day. And at my age, you have to do it like 
really every day. And get, and learning a new instrument is the same thing. You kind of have to do it every day. And I just, I haven't been doing it as much. At the beginning of quarantine, back in March or April, I should say, um, I was really doing it. And then I just kind of began to slowly digress. <laughs> you know, and, um, but speaking of television, I've, I have gotten into a, a couple of shows. I just started watching this show called Ratchet, which is, oh, an yeah. oh my gosh, it's an incredible show. I just kind of got caught in this show. And yeah. Um, so, yeah, the, the TV binge watching, that's a thing. Too. Okay. Cool. Yeah, I actually have a question. Actually, that's my next question. Um, is there a show that you're currently binge watching? Yeah, right now, right now is Ratchet, <laughs> which look is not a show that's appropriate for your audience. Yeah, this is yeah. um, yeah, this is not, but but it's it's a it was a fun show. I've kind of gotten um, hooked on it, and um, so yeah, that's where I am. Oh, cool. Yeah, we've watched a couple episodes, but it's like we're watching it slowly because it's we can't like we have to watch it during the day because I know if we watch it at night, I'm going to get really freaked out and I won't be able to sleep. So we have to watch it during the day. So we're watching it very slowly. You know, what's interesting is that I'm I'm there, there's. I've been working as a director um, a lot. So it was like, I'm, I'm now looking at kind of shows in a different way. And um, I, I'm directing one of the superhero shows. Uh, so now besides the show Ratchet, I've been looking at um, this other superhero show. And I, before I only watched like a few episodes, but now I've been watching that as well. But I haven't really been watching that the same reason why I'm watching Ratchet. Like a Ratchet, I'm just kind of caught in as a fan. And but this other superhero show I've been watching just as a director, I think. So I have to kind of make that distinction. I have been watching this other show, but it's really been about how that show works technically. But Ratchet, I've just been in as a fan and just caught up into that show entirely. Cool. Yeah, I've just been, I've been uh, re-watching Arrow and yeah. The Flash and another show called Rise. So I've mm -hmm. been joking with my mom. I'm like, I'm very busy. I don't have time to do anything <laughs> else. So <laughs> I got, I'm catching up on, my, on all my viewing, mom, my TV viewing, so I don't have time to do anything. Yeah, I get it. I totally yeah. get it. Yeah, I don't have you know, time my, my, to, my, to do school. <laughs> you know, my son, my son, though, is funny because my son is 10, 10 years old, and he he's loving all of the old shows like Fresh Prince of Bel-Air and Family Matters. And like he's watching all these old, old shows that I watched, you know, as a youngster, and he loves it. Like he, he loves it, loves it, loves it, loves it. So he's not even watching. I mean, he's watch, he, he's, he's done all the Casey undercovers and all that stuff. He's done all those shows. He's watched those too. But now he's like on like the old shows from the eighties. And I'm like, okay. And the early nineties. Okay. Oh, cool. <laughs> yeah. I love a lot of the eighties um, movies. Uh, my sister and I are there always one summer our mom showed us like every 80s movie so we just had an 80s movie marathon yeah so. it's funny about it's funny with my son because he doesn't my son doesn't like to watch and, and this takes out maybe 80% of all the Disney movies. He doesn't want to see any, because a lot, a lot of times there's a, there's a common theme in the movies, let's say Frozen, for example, where it's like, you know, the, the protagonist loses their parents in like, uh, or Lion King, the protagonist loses their parents in like the first 15 minutes or 10 minutes of the show. My son hates that. He hates it. He's like, I want to be entertained, but I don't want people to lose their parents, right? So my son yeah. does not like Frozen. He does not like Lion King. He like he doesn't want to see any of that. He just wants to be kind of entertained without people dying. 
Uh, yeah. Like, you know something? Uh, yeah, that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so is there a song that you always have on repeat? There's a song that I always have on repeat. I don't, there's not a song that I have on repeat, but there are movie scenes that I have on repeat. repeat. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like, like there, there's, there's, there's songs that I can listen to and they take me back. Right. Or the songs I listen to, I work out to That's, And in, in that sense, you know, I, yes, I do have a playlist. And if you want to call that a repeat, because I work out a lot. So, yeah, but, but more so than, than not, they're kind of, they're kind of moments in my life where um, if, if like, like for example, here's a very good example. There's a movie called field of dreams, older movie. Right. And, and there's a great scene in that movie where there's this great quote that comes out from one of the supporting characters. They had actually they had great quotes all over that. Movie. But usually like for me, um, when I'm, when, when I'm thinking about how do I apply myself to this moment or how do I work out this difficult situation in my life, whatever it might be, there's a lot of times quotes from movies, oddly enough, that, that a lot of, or quotes from my father, right? That though is either my father or a movie quote that usually comes back to me that is on repeat. If there has to be something that's repeated in my life. So going back to the Field of Dreams quote, there, there's, a, there, there's a quote that was in that movie that a lot of times kind of comes back to me when I'm facing kind of a difficult time in my life. So it's or a difficult challenge, right? Whatever that challenge might be. And that's happened in Star Wars and Shawshank Redemption and Forrest Gump. And I can name these older movies that, that these, the, the moments in these movies that kind of resonate in my life. And the quotes from these movies are kind of like on repeat in my brain. So um, it's more that for me than it is music. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah. I am. Um, I always have like, I have scenes from like shows and movies that stick with me. And I'm like constantly like, I'm like replaying them in my head or like when I'm bored, I'm just playing them in my head. Um, so. I mean, there, you, you know, there are times, it's funny you say that, Mike, because there, there are times when I'll just, I've, I've gone and found those movies and just kind of fast forward to those parts. It's like, oh yeah, I need to hear that. Right. That's yeah. a cool quote. And I just want to see that scene again. Yeah. And a lot of times for me, that's, that's the thing that's on kind of repeat in my brain. Like, Hmm, I remember that quote meant a lot to me in that moment. And it, it it's applicable to this moment in my life. Right. Yeah. Um, so do you ever get anxious before shooting a scene? And if so, do you have a ritual that helps you kind of stay calm? Yeah. Um, because I have blown and done terrible in so many scenes, <laughs> a lot of times for me, I think about... Um, <clears throat> I challenge myself by thinking about how I'm going to feel afterwards and have I listened mostly because a lot of times in scenes as actors, <clears throat> you know, I'm going to give you some, a, a few secrets. Uh, a, a lot of times for actors, not always, but sometimes um, they're, they're, they're we're using a technique that um, can convey um, anger or sadness or whatever, but we're not really in the scene. We just know, we just know it works and we're, we're kind of doing the technique and we're not necessarily going through some work uh, internally as the character, right? So we're just kind of, we're, we're kind of um, uh, acting angry. We're not being angry, right? We're kind of acting sad. We're not being sad. So, but the, but the actors that are actually, being sad or encompassing sadness or anger, you can tell the difference. Um, particularly now audiences know the difference between really good actors and 
oh, they're okay actors. And a lot of times what I'm speaking about now is, is the difference that they're seeing is, is the technique versus people that are really committed to characters. So um, when you're in a series and you're doing a series for a long time, a lot of times you can become that actor who's just kind of going through the motions of it and acting angry as opposed to really being in that moment. So I have trained myself to realize that a lot of times I'm, I'm more, I'm disappointed in myself for not being disciplined enough and, and, and really staying in the moment. So my ritual now is shaming myself, <laughs> knowing, <laughs> knowing that I will be ashamed of what I just done. Um, if I don't really prepare and really allow myself to, uh, to act in each moment. So that, that was, I haven't done that in years, but, <clears throat> but I, but I have, I have cheated before uh, in that sense. So I, I don't do that now by just remembering that you're not going to feel good about yourself as an actor and what you did, because, you know, this stuff is our posterity, right? It's like, you can look forever at Arrow now, right? 20 years from now, you can go back and see this stuff. So I, I want it to be um, work that I'm proud of. So I, I really do apply myself a lot more than I did when I was a then when I was a younger actor. Oh, cool. Yeah. yeah. Um, so my last question for you is who do you consider to be a real life superhero and why? Well, <clears throat> I don't know um, what other people are saying. Um, it is my, my father passed away in in uh, four years ago, I'm um, oh, sorry, six years ago now. And, um, and it was always him and my mother. And my mother's still with us. So my father's my hero and he knows it. And my mother is my other hero. And uh, it was for much of the reasons why I told you at the beginning of this conversation, because they were my, they were uh, my biggest cheerleaders. cheerleaders. And, um, and there were challenges there, you know, you become a teenager and sometimes you challenge your parents, right? And I was, I could be challenging, yeah. but, <clears throat> and there were times they lost their patience, you know, they're, they're, they're just human. But now as a parent, as I've gotten older, I can look back and, at, and really appreciate uh, so many sacrifices that they made. And uh, because, you know, parents deal with a lot. Yeah. They're dealing with a lot. <laughs> And, and there is no, you know, there's, there's a million books on how to parent and, and no one's really gotten it right. You know, it's, it's a no, it, there's no one size fits all. Um, you deal with what you got and you kind of make the best decisions you can. So, and my parents did, and they were, they were always there. They always told me the truth and, um, and I appreciated them doing the best they could. So I, I would say my parents, my father's gone, but now it's, it's my mom without a doubt. Cool. Yeah, um, my mom and my sister are my biggest superheroes. We've been so we've been corn like quarantining with each other, and it's we we've been talking about it. Like it's good that we're not sick of each other. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so. yeah, I know that that is. That is amazing that you guys are not sick of each other. That's fantastic. You guys must have a great relationship. Yeah, we do. We're all, uh, the three of us are very close. You're so fortunate. That's so wonderful. And particularly during these, these, these uh, days when everyone's kind of cooped up together, right? And you guys are still laughing and still having fun. That's fantastic. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, well, thank you so much for calling in. I, still like i'm trying to process that i'm actually talking to you right now so thank you so much well, my thank you for having me um god bless you and the children's hospital and 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 thanks for all you guys what all you guys are doing there in colorado well, thank you so, so much. We enjoyed getting to hear all your stories. And just know if you're ever in Colorado, we'd love for you to stop by. I'm sure there's lots of kids that would love to meet you. You have a great day, That's and thanks nice for spending thank so much time here with us. Take care now. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye.